Saludo Francesco, Echo Alpha 7, uh, repeat the suffix, uh, I got Papa, repeat suffix. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. In this video we'll take a close look at the MAT40 remote antenna tuner from MAT Tuner Communications Limited. And the MAT40 tuner is designed to be used outside, whether it's a permanent install or used portable. Capable of handling up to 120 watts SSB and 30 watts digital modes, the MAT40 supports 1.6 MHz up to 54 MHz, well within range of 160 meters up to the 6 meter handbands. And the MAT40 supports ICOM, Yaesu, and Kenwood transceivers connecting directly to the radio's ATU interface port for using the supplied 10 meter control cable. Now you will need to make sure that you ordered the correct interface cable for your radio maker model. The MAT40 is fully waterproof and is encased in this nice aluminium alloy box. Now on one end we have the main antenna wire output. As you can see it's just one connection, so not compatible with coax fed antennas. The main radiating element is attached to the MAT40 through this wing nut on top of the isolator. On the other end of the MAT40, we find an earth lug for your earthing system, a control interface socket where the control cable plugs into, and lastly, an SO239 socket for the 50 ohm coax feeder from your transceiver. Now the little black nut on the right appears to be some kind of breather hole, and it's not removable or used in the setup. Power for the MAT40 is taken directly from the radio via the control cable, Tuning mode and frequency selection also comes directly from the radio. Now mounting and use of the MAT40 can be in many ways. For example, it can be mounted at the bottom of a vertical antenna or mounted up on the wall or a mast with a horizontal wire. However, I'm going to test it as an inverted L. Now I'll talk more about wire lengths in a moment, but there is something I'm wanting to show you first. Now the MAT40 tuner, along with all the MAT tuners, are actually built to a high quality and they all work very well. I don't think I've heard any bad reports of these tuners, but I guess like anything technical, someone somewhere would have had issues. However, what I wanted to show you is inside the box. Now the box is held with quite a lot of screws and these screws allow you to remove the base plate to expose the PCB and internals. Now I've had the pleasure of seeing inside around 20 of these MAT40 tuners and all of them seem to experience the same issue. Now on the left side, depending on which way you're looking, we find a plastic insulator and a through bolt which is where you attach your long wire to. The outside of this bolt has a wing nut which is tightened when fixing the main element. Now watch what happens if the bolt starts to spin when tightening the wing nut. Now, even though the aluminium alloy appears to be coated, the end of the wire lug inside can potentially sit on that aluminium box. Now, it's possible that over time this could wear away some of the coating and potentially cause a short. Now, if you have one of these tuners or you're thinking of buying one, then I would recommend that you check the orientation of this lug and then tighten the outside bolt accordingly to minimize the bolt turning and causing the lug to touch the case. The rest of the PCB looks really well made, and I know some Yaesu models had some issues with the first batch of these MAT40 tuners, but I believe that issue has now been fixed. Now, the flux that you can see on the output wire is just from where I resoldered this connection after removing the board to check it. I just haven't cleaned it yet, so if you buy a new one, you shouldn't see that flux there. In a moment, I'll show you how I've installed this tuner for today's test against my NFED Halfwave. But let's first take a look at this chart, which shows which wire lengths to stay away from and which wire lengths are the best suggested. Now this information was taken from a very good presentation on YouTube regarding random wires. Now it is suggested that random or long wire wires that are used with a tuner like this should not be resonant on any band. And this includes multiples or harmonics of those frequencies. Now I've not personally tested all of these wire lengths, so I cannot personally verify this information, but I believe it is a good starting point. The length of wire in today's test will be 58 feet long, which is around 17 feet less than the NFED halfwave, which I'll be testing against. The NFED halfwave does have a 49 to 1 transformer at the base and a 110 microhenry coil at 20 meters in, 
which is used for tuning the 80 meter band. Now here you can see that I've attached the MAT40 tuner to the fence at the end of my garden. I'm using some ultra thin but very strong green wire from Soda Beams here in the UK. At the bottom I have some more of the green wire going off to a copper ground spike. And while I know this is not really adequate earthing for this type of antenna, this is a temporary install just for this test. Now in the middle we can see the control cable connected, which runs all the way back to the shack and connected directly to my ICOM 7300. We then have on the right side the 50 ohm feeder coax, which also goes directly to my 7300. And the main element green wire goes up a fiberglass pole around 6 meters, and then the remainder of the wire goes off horizontal towards the house. Now from here we can see that the MAT40 tuner wire on the right and then on the left is my NFED half wave. You can see that the MAT40 tuner wire is around 3 meters lower in height than the NFED half wave. So just bear that in mind when we're looking at the test results. I'll also be using SDR Uno as my SDR software along with an RSPDX receiver which is connected to the ICOM 7300 by an RX tap and that will be on port A. Now the NFED half wave is connected directly to the RSPDX receiver on port C. So every now and again you'll see me transmit to initiate a tune. This is because when using the MAP40 with the ICOM 7300 the tuner needs to be told to either tune or pull a previous tune from its memory, unlike Yaesu radios in which the MAP40 tuner will follow the frequency automatically. So let's take a look at some tests that I performed earlier. Now just as a side note, HF is in a really bad shape at the moment, so don't expect great signals from either of the antennas. Yeah, two zero H V D M zero M double R. Um, uh, actually, has, has Steve had a go? Um, Steve, uh, have you spoken to Jimmy yet? M um, six J N Z. Yeah, Mike Six, Julie Never, Missouri. No, I haven't actually. Yeah, good, uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, Julie. You're a good five nine here down in uh, Catrick in North Yorkshire, my friend. Ever? Yeah, QSL. It looks like we've worked before. Uh, Fourteen eighty meters. Uh, I'm according to the log book. You know that. But I'm using a remotely my station at the moment. Uh, okay, I'm out. Anyway, I not keep. Uh, I not keep any longer. Uh, thanks. Uh, very nice. Uh, uh, short QSO. I'm very pleased to copy you here again. Best 70 degrees, and have a nice DX, and have a nice uh, uh, early morning there. Uh, 9 Kilo 2 Echo Sierra. Yes, 100%. Kilo Mike Papa, uh, Francesco, 100% uh, copy. Uh, good evening. Uh, you 59, 59 time to time, uh, big plus. Name is Alexander, location central part of Ukraine. How did he copy over? You are sure that many thanks for tuning in the man in Denmark, so you are five and nine in Brazil. And again, you're about 100 watts, about the foot, I can cover 56 kg, microphone, I can, sugar mic 6, and antenna system is a four element, I believe, and for myself, about 14 meters over the ground, and then it has about 12 meters long. You see what's up? So from that cut down test video, you could see that 80 meters was better received on the NFED half wave, but on 40 meters and 20 meters, it was roughly the same. Now 17 meters also appeared to be slightly better on the NFED half wave. Now any bands higher up were completely flat and I just didn't get any footage of any contacts. 
As these results are pretty close, I'm pretty confident that if the wire was installed more similar to the NFED half wave, i.e. with more of a vertical element and longer horizontal, then it would have performed the same or performed better than the NFED half wave. Having more wire higher in the air is always a good thing when it comes to HF antennas. Also, the ground system was not the best it could have been. Now I'm seriously considering removing that 110 microhenry coil from my NFED halfwave and removing the 49 to 1 transformer and then using the NFED halfwave wire connected to the MAT40 tuner. Of course, I would need to add a substantial ground system to complement that antenna, but I'll be really interested to see how it works with longer wire that's higher in the air. Now, if any of you guys use the MAT40 tuner, then let me know how you get on with it down in the comments below. I'm sure we would all like to know your results. Anyway, guys, until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.